Hello everyone, uh, my name is Francesco Zorzi, I'm uh, a designer and illustrator and I come from Italy. Um, thanks Creative Mornings for inviting me uh, to talk about the topic of the month, which is ink. And um, yeah, I would like to make it, you know, a brief story about myself to make it a bit personal. And as I said, I come from Italy, I came here in Holland three years ago to work for a design studio, Forma Fantasma. Uh, Hello, Andrea Simone, here in the, in the room. And um, from the beginning of the year, I started working a bit more independently also for myself uh, with the, the name of No Rocket Studio. And the reason of the name of this uh, relates to, you know, my personal story. Uh, since I was a kid, the, the only two things that I really cared about were drawing, 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 behind every receipt, behind every page of every notebook, you know, my house is full of drawings everywhere. And I wanted to be an astronaut. These were the two things I always cared about, and that's a picture of me, age of two, probably pretending to be on a missile or something. <laughs> and I really want to do that so much that my best friend and I, we even built up a bottle rocket, well, we wanted to do it, and uh, we took a plastic bottle, we stuffed it with alcohol, and. Uh, you know, it was like a plastic Molotov or something. We wanted to just send it out in the outer space. And, and you know, it, of course, it was a disaster. It never worked out. The bottle melted down on a fence. And in that very day, I realized that I would never be an astronaut, never be a scientist. But it was not a problem. Here I am and, you know, just uh, doing illustrations, drawing. And, you know, that's the thing that I wanted to do. And no rocket reminds me a little bit like that, the same attitude, the same, you know, kids' eyes watching at the world with, you know, the same kind of no rocket science kind of feeling and, you know, no rocket. Uh, when Creating Mooring proposed to, you know, asked to talk about ink, uh, I started thinking about what ink is to me and the most interesting thing was probably to talk about my personal relation to ink. Uh, when you think about ink, you think about letterpress, logos, illustrations, prints, and ink, first of all, is a medium to express ideas. You can, you can use it in a more traditional way. You can be more experimental to it. The process of creation can be also create experimental or very traditional. So I would like to just walk a little bit through some of the things that I've done and to explain my personal values and processes related to it. So as many of you probably in the room, um, being creative designers, graphic designers or whatsoever, uh, especially at the beginning, after my graduation, uh, my old process was starting and ending behind a computer screen. I was in love with vector graphics and these are some infographics that I that I've done, uh, yeah, vectors, uh, um, and they were published on IDN magazine. But what it's nice of this is uh, that I love the crisp feeling of using vector graphics. You know, the fact that you can always have sharp lines zooming in and out. You can move from a small scale to a huge scale, and you can erase your mistakes going back and forth. And that was a very special feeling to me. But the more I was going on, I realized that you could do the same things also by hand. You know, drawing with the brush, uh, trying to do super sharp and straight lines, perfect circle. But you can never make an exact circle, a super straight line, very perfect shapes. But then I started uh, looking at imperfections and mistakes, not at mistakes anymore. It actually uh, puts a great value to it. it. It creates depth that you cannot have 
at the same at the same way just doing things completely digital and the nice thing is that the creative process it's very different and much more interesting to me when you just work uh, doing things completely or at least partially by hand you know touching the things having like a physical support or something of course I also do uh, uh, digital stuff you can also be uh, digital and start maybe from like a hand sketch that you did. This is a logo that I did for a company of bike frame makers in Milan, Ferri Veloci. And it's done starting with a sketch and then moving digital. And the process so is like mediated, let's say. But you could also do everything completely analog. This is uh, the logo and an illustration for Asinello Press, which is a small publishing house based in Genoa in Italy. And the old process started manually with guidelines done by hand, you know, uh, every, every line, the, the illustration and the typeface, all done by, you know, just trying to do things as perfect as possible, but never super control. And the nice thing is that also, you know, you cannot really you cannot go back whenever you want, you know, once you do a mistake, you just have to cope with that, you know, or you just change completely and go back from the beginning. So it's also like a very uh, different uh, process line, let's say. So I started thinking also like, uh, what is ink to me? Uh, what it can be through the things that I've done? Ink can be, uh, let's say, uh, you can move out of the two dimension things and uh, you can add this third dimension. This is an example of an installation that I've done with, uh, with a friend and illustrator uh, based in Italy, Giacomo Bagnara. This is an installation called Micro Macro. So instead of just doing flat graphics on the computer and then to just print them out and just letting them float in the, uh, in the space, we decided to just hand paint them on a physical support. So it has a thickness and it becomes like tangible and it's, uh, it just steps out of this kind of flatness and it becomes like authentic and a real object, let's say. So the nice thing is that you kind of enhance these volumes and you can see that the ink is not just flat anymore. You can just in experience the drag of pain on, on, uh, on the surface and you can just see every imperfection as part of this process. So it's really kind of uh, straightforward as a, as a process and um, it can also be uh, three-dimensional in another sense. You can, uh, you can play with perception through what you, what you do. This is a ongoing series of paintings that I'm working on called Still Moving and uh, I took inspiration from GIF images and uh, the perception of human eye and how we perceive volumes and movement through our mind. And so what I like of this works is that there is a clash of elements. So at a glance you just see these graphics, are really funky graphics, uh, just quite flat the way they're painted on a physical support. Or you can see them if you look carefully to it as uh, the support which is cut out and the frame is kind of leading to a very dynamic uh, surface. So if you just look carefully to it, the graphics, instead of being super still, they kind of remind you of a movement of like very simple graphics as polka dots, stripes, uh, really dynamically uh, mm, adapted on a very movable uh, surface let's say so what I like here is that with whatever you draw you can also be playing with the mind and with the perception in a in a much deeper way and uh, this is another example of just being more tactile using ink uh, not as ink anymore but this is a project called charcoal that I've been working on while working with Forma Fantasma uh, the project itself was a commission from the Vitra Design Museum to form a Fantasma and uh, the museum was uh, calling uh, five designers and pairing each one with a local Swiss manufacturer. Forma Fantasma was paired to a charcoal burner. 
So the whole idea was to talk uh, on two sides. Uh, the collection of vassals uh, they do was uh, talking about purity and healthcare, which are nowadays associated a lot with, uh, with charcoal, so water purifying uh, objects and such. And alongside the collection, uh, we also wanted to talk about the, all the pollution and the traditional uh, elements of, um, you know, the bad size of the production of charcoal. So to do that, I talking about smoke and, you know, uh, boring forests and, and stuff, I, I decided to use, instead of normal ink, to just do my, my drawings, to use the material itself. Uh, charcoal, like burnt logs, and to have fun mixing them uh, with different chemicals such as ammonia, benzene, turpentine. Uh, I was using uh, charcoal pure or grinded down in a powder uh, to just get the perfect uh, structure or the perfect uh, aesthetic expression that I wanted to achieve. So it's nice because you can use the material you're talking about as a topic of whatever you do, both as a uh, medium and uh, you, can, you can use the, the material that they use for doing the, the, the drawings also to, to talk about whatever you're talking about. So charcoal here is uh, the topic of the drawings and the material with which the drawings are, are done. And this is the, another project called the Invisible Line, and in a way, this is the absence of ink. It was part of a, uh, an installation at the Dutch Design Week 2013, I guess, uh, in, a, um, in an installation called Cifabric. And it's uh, the concept of the installation were production lines, and it's a production line of monochromatic drawings using thermal paper. So thermal paper, probably you know, uh, it's the paper of every receipt. So it's a special technical paper coated with chemicals that uh, they turn black when exposed to heat. So it's the, um, the typical paper that you can use in fax machine, cash machines, ad registers, and uh, it's very special in a way because uh, we experience it just black and white. But if you, I was wondering what happens if you just use other uh, elements to reveal like a whole variety of uh, grayscales. This is like a fax machine seen from the top and on the right you see uh, the way the machines interpret uh, the drawing that is done on the other side by hand. This is a splash of hot water on the surface of the paper. And you can see that it's the same uh, medium, the same paper but the two uh, languages are completely different. And what I wanted to do, instead of using the machine, I built myself like a variety of tools that I was uh, using handmade. Uh, it was a combination, I was trying to combine borosilicate glass, which is heat resistant and metal, using heat as if it was ink in a way. So it was like really uh, using my, my hands if I, if I was a drawing machine. So, it's nice when you, when you take uh, some very technical elements or uh, in this case some, some material which is uh, especially developed for the industry and you could try to interpret it with yourself in a much, uh, in a much deeper way. And uh, what I like to, what I wanted to do was like to express the old potential of something that has never been done in an artistic way so far. And the nice thing of using glass is that it's something that we all know and we use it every day. And to use something so simple and clear uh, as a drawing material when, when hot in, in, such a, in such a way, it's, uh, it just kind of reveals a chemical reaction after your eyes in a very straightforward way. And I thought it was really, you know, really a direct way, a really human and uh, warm way to do illustrations with. Um, I would like to, uh, to conclude with my last project that I developed last summer. It's called Run Tour. And uh, I was taking inspiration from uh, 
the typical track of uh, you know the upper crust of society let's say in the you know centuries ago they were hanging around the European country rediscovering you know the, the artistic uh, uh, values of uh, the, Europe the European countries and um, with very almost unlimited funds just you know spending months uh, throughout the country uh, basically getting in touch with, uh, with art and I try to take inspiration for the process but you know in a very personal way so what I did I just uh, decided to just uh, rediscover my own skills and my own country just going around with the toolbox uh, with my brushes and my paint, uh, just doing signs in small countryside uh, towns or seaside villages to, you know, explore a technique that I've never used before. I mean, I know how to paint, but I never painted a sign before. And I thought that the best way to learn how to do it is just, you know, just go out there and do it. So it was really fun experience because you, you can really take the element that you want for a craft that you want to learn uh, the way you want to. So you just take it as an inspiration and you just interpret the elements that you like and you just kind of blend it together in a very personal way. So uh, that's a short, uh, that's the video that we did to just uh, document the project.
So um, what I like about this project, it's that it's a personal uh, interpretation of something that I really like. I mean, uh, it's not really sign painting, it's a combination of elements that start from sign painting, but they mix illustration and color and calligraphy. The tactility of painting on objects and you know, talking with people, a bit of concept. And I think it's nice to conclude like that because it's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like ink in a way. The definition of ink is very broad, you know. I can talk about this, people can talk about something else. And what I think is nice is to just personal interpret whatever we're talking about. And uh, this is what I feel in my personal relation to ink. And I think that's the thing that we should do in a way, you know, just combine the elements that we like and just blend it into something that is personal and nice to us and just develop our own style in a way. And yeah, just have fun with that. So yeah, thank you.